remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties.
serve on the board of directors of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, the management and the staff of the same institution, we would like to thank you very much for coming and welcome you to our noble institution. Uh, we acknowledge among us here the presence of the, the Director of Medical Services, a representative of the Minister of Health, Dr. Mustafa Bitei. We also have the Director of Medical Services, the Gambia Armed Forces, to be represented or represented by Dr. Alkali Conte. And onwards, we have uh, the Chairman of the Defense Services, uh, Major General Yakuba Drame, though I am not seeing him around, so I might not know him. Uh, we also have uh, the Minister of Defense, Honorable Sheikh Amar Fai, among us here. We welcome you all for coming to Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital this morning. Uh, before leaving the other speakers to come and deliver uh, the speech that they have for you, on behalf of this institution, I would like to thank the Gambia Armed Forces once again for not only demonstrating their commitment to the oath that they've taken in respect to the Gambian people's well-being. You have not only promised the Gambian people that you would lay down your lives to save the lives of the other Gambian people. Here you are proving that even in peace time, you are willing to give your blood to the citizens of this country and maintain them healthy and alive. I congratulate you and thank you very much for taking this very bold initiative uh, coming to the aid of the Gambian people and the general patients of this hospital. For we are not only catering for Gambian people. This institution is the only referral hospital in the country, meaning everybody, every Gambian, who would be affected one way or the other in one part of this country, if cannot be treated in that part of the world, or the Gambia, they are transferred to this institution. I am also glad to inform you that our, our staff are doing a wonderful job. We are self, uh, selflessly serving the Gambian people to the best of their abilities and to uh, be, uh, the resources available to us. I thank you very much. I have been here not long. I have seen individual militaries coming in and out of this institution. Sometimes they are called by others. Uh, sometimes they are called by others and then they come to the rescue of all. Uh, before I leave you and welcome the uh, welcoming remarks by Dr. Sala, I would like us to pray for the sick and the weak of this country all together in our own different ways, meaning if we are a Muslim, Christian, or whatever, we can all pray for the well-being of this uh, institution, for the well-being of the patients that are with us here. We pray for our staff who are really trying tremendously at very difficult times, day and night, being at the service of the Gambian people and the patients coming to Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital in Banjo. I thank you very much, and I hope and pray that we can join together, uh, deep from our hearts, pray for our patients and for the nation's well-being. Together, we stand strong. This is what is expected of each and every Gambian. Let's pray. Thank you very much. I therefore welcome the chairman of the board of directors of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, Dr. Adam Asala, to this stage here. Good morning to you all. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Alaji Sheikh Omar Fai, whom I know since childhood because we grew, grew up together in Banjul. Uh, 
the Chief of Defense Staff, whom I also know very, very well. We have a long linkage medically, but also socially. Uh, the Acting Director of Health Services, uh, Dr. Omar Bitei. Uh, the Acting, the Deputy Chief Medical Director, um, Dr. Roberts. Um, the Director of Admin and Human Resources, Mr. Malangdong. Uh, the Chief Matron of the Hospital, uh, Madam Horaja J. Horaja Sen, rather. Uh, other senior military officers here present, uh, members of the armed forces here present, uh, staff of the Royal uh, Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. It is indeed our great honor and pleasure to welcome you all today here for a very, very, very vital function, which is the donation of probably one of the most important commodities in the hospital, which is blood. Uh, it is very rare that we receive such a large number of able-bodied, healthy, strong, young men and women. The nature of our job is such that we usually receive uh, people in their weakest condition most of the time. But today it is very heartening that we receive uh, young military officers and your seniors here for one noble purpose, and that is to donate blood. As we all know, the World Blood Day is the 14th of June, which uh, will be commemorated worldwide. And this is, in essence, a precursor of that commemoration. Uh, blood, as I mentioned earlier, is an extremely important component in a hospital, particularly this teaching hospital, which is the only tertiary referral center in the country. And this is where we receive all the bad cases, be they road traffic accidents, be they uh, chronically or acutely ill patients who are beyond uh, the limits of service of our peripheral units, uh, be they health centers or uh, regional hospitals. And uh, we also receive others who are extremely in need of blood, mainly women who are in delivery, who can suffer different forms of hemorrhage, be it prepartum, that is before they deliver, intrapartum during deliver, delivery, and postpartum after they deliver. Blood is often life-saving for these individuals. But we also have children who are either grossly malnourished uh, particularly children, or who have serious debilitating infections. Uh, and they normally become extremely anemic to a point where if they don't have blood, they will not make it, irrespective of how good medical service one can render. Now, when the layperson looks at blood, one may think it's just fluid. But blood is 
to us much more than fluid. It, ha it has all the components that are necessary for human survival. It carries all the proteins in the blood, including uh, those that are antibodies that fight infections. It contains all the electrolytes without which vital organs cannot function. It carries the oxygen around the body and delivers it, delivers it to tissues. And without that delivery, the tissues cannot function. Uh, and it's also responsible for maintaining what we call homeostasis. That is a balance between the, the substances and the liquids in the human body. So it is extremely important. And unfortunately, humans cannot manufacture blood. There is blood substitutes, but it's still not the same thing. Uh, so we can only rely on the, this great gift that the Almighty has given human beings. Uh, unfortunately, you have to be strong and healthy to donate blood. Because if you yourself are lacking blood or at the verge of uh, serious anemia, you cannot d donate blood. So that is why it's all the more important that young, healthy people like yourselves are willing and able to donate blood, uh, the importance of which cannot be overemphasized. So we, we cannot thank you enough uh, for this extremely noble gesture. And uh, it is also a clear testimony that different professional groups uh, can work together, and by extension also with civil society to make sure that we achieve our common objectives. And of course, what, nothing is more important than maintaining our people healthy. Uh, so I, on behalf of the patients, because they are the focus of this, they are the most important in this institution, uh, and on behalf of the staff of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, and on behalf of our board, we want to express our sincerest gratitude to you all for taking your time to come here to donate blood, which is the lifeline of medical services. Uh, we only hope that all of you can do it without any hitches. Unfortunately, our st storage capacity is limited. We would have liked to, to bleed all of you today and saw it. But because of the limitations we have, we can only do it in batches. So I think your senior officers can work with our staff that are responsible for this and see how it can be properly organized to run smoothly. Uh, once again, I thank you all for coming here. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman of the Board of Directors, uh, Dr. Adamasala. Uh, we understand that the sun is very hot, so we would like to uh, uh, run this quickly so that the uh, uh, incoming speakers would not have taken uh, so much time. Uh, and besides, we have so many people to be tested, and uh, the capacity out there is six persons at a time. So we might end up being here the whole day. Uh, we therefore, after Dr. Sala, we welcome the Director of Medical Services, the Gambia Armed Forces, Dr. Alcali Conte, to have his remarks given to us. The Minister of Defense, uh, Honorable Siakomarfai, 
uh, the chief of defense staff of the Gambia Armed Forces, uh, Major General Yankuba Edrame, the deputy uh, CDS of, uh, of the Gambia Armed Forces, um, the acting director of medical services, uh, the Minister of Health, the acting chief medical um, director of uh, EFSTH Hospital, the hospital staff, and the management, and officers and men of the Gambia Armed Forces, good afternoon to you all. Um, it gives me a, a very great pleasure to stand before this, this August gathering to make a very short uh, remark. But uh, due to the lack of time, I will try to be very brief. Um, as you all know, June, June 14 is celebrated worldwide by WHO and International World to, to mark the World Blood Donor Day. And the aim of this commemoration is to, is to say thanks to all the people that, that goes to donate blood. So uh, on that note, I will take this opportunity, opportunity to thank all the members of the Gambia Armed Forces who are here today to give blood to the uh, needy patient. And, and one of the um, aim of this um, commemoration also is to raise awareness of the importance of blood to save lives. And that's why the Gambia Armed Forces have come out in, in, in very large numbers in order to, uh, in order to complement the, the effort of the Minister of Health to reduce maternal mortality and infant mortality. As you all know, Gambia, Gambia Armed Forces have been the, prin the principal blood donors in the country. But uh, this year, is a, we, want to, we want to mark it with a, with a difference. So that's why, um, uh, under the directive of the Chief of Defense Staff, and who is, uh, and who is the champion of the all, the, the, this noble initiative, we want to do a, we want to do a countrywide uh, blood donation. So as we are speaking now, what, what is happening uh, at this hospital is the same thing that is happening in, uh, all over the country. But just to give you a summary of what is happening countrywide, um, um, uh, uh, Yundum Barracks have sent 100 personnel to become a, uh, become a major health center. And they've also sent some personnel to Bundu Maternal and Child Health in Hospital. And, and Fajara Barracks have sent 100 personnel to Kanifin General Hospital. And uh, Parafanya Hospital, uh, sorry, Parafanya Barracks also have sent 100 personnel to Farafin General Hospital in the same initiative. And uh, uh, the, the company at Njongon, they've also sent personnel to SL in hospital to, to, to donate blood. And those at Kudang and Lamenkoto, they have also sent the same number of personnel to, to Bansan Hospital. And those in, Bans in Basse, they have also sent uh, 150 personnel to donate blood at, at Basse Hospital. And do, uh, those at uh, uh, Kanilai, that, that is the 4 Infantry Battalion, they've also sent uh, 150 personnel to Buyam General Hospital. And do, uh, those of us in Banyul here, the Gambian Navy, uh, the Defense of Care, and the Joint, uh, Joint Headquarters, we've, we've sent, uh, we, we are all here, in, in, we are all here to donate blood. So, the, so as, I can, uh, as I can, you know, I, uh, just to say, the, the personnel in, in, in this gathering, they are the personnel of the, the, the Gambian Navy, uh, Defense, of, in Defense of in Headquarters, and, and the Joint Sub Service Headquarters. Uh, yes, I, I, as I said, you know, in any initiative, there's always a, a champion beh behind, beh behind that initiative. And the champion for, for this particular course is no other than, than by, not, not, uh, no other than by uh, our own city, the Chief of Defense Staff. Yes. So the, this particular initiative uh, is, is, is the initiative of our Chief of Defense Staff. And the aim is to, to cement the already uh, good relationship between the, the, military, the Gambia Armed Forces and the civil population. And you know, um, I, I, as we always, uh, as we understand, the, there is no big sacrifice bigger than blood. If somebody gives you blood, you know, he has given everything. So you know, this, the, this thing has gone to show that Gambia Armed Forces, it, you know, it can do everything to, to help the, the Gambian population in, in terms of conf conflict and in terms of peace. So on that note, I will say a, a very big thank you to all the, all, all the officers and men of the Gambian Armed Forces for coming in large numbers to donate blood to the Gambian, uh, to the Gambian population. So with this, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Alkali Conte. May I welcome the representative of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Uh, Mustafa Bite, Director of Health Services. Now, the Minister of Defense, Honorable Samuel Fai, he has been a good friend to the Ministry of Health and has been very supportive to all our endeavors. So uh, we extend our greetings. Uh, 
the Chief of Defense Staff, General Yankuba Drame, Dr. Adam Asala, the Chairman of the Board of the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, uh, the Acting CMD or Deputy CMD of the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, and his staff, the Director of Admin and the Chief Metro. The gallant soldiers present here, ready to provide the most precious gift you can ever give to any Gambian. All staff of the EFSTH and Minister of Health, staff present, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we say good afternoon to you all and welcome to this important and august gathering. Um, professionally, I am an obstetrician for many years and I have seen where the availability of blood or lack of can determine who survives or who dies. So it is a common story in our labor wards here that when we are in dire need of blood, you see everybody referring to them, go to the army, go to the army. You've been salvaging, you've been saving a lot of lives for a long time, and we appreciate it a lot. But now you've taken it to a different level. I cannot imagine the director of medical uh, services in the army coming to my office, pursuing, pushing hard to see that you know, they come in these large numbers to donate blood. Like the effort, the passion we see in the army to try to save life really surprises us. And really, we appreciate this a lot. Uh, this is a highly laudable effort. And, you know, blood, like has been said by the uh, board chair, is considered in some aspects in medicine like a drug because before you give it, you have to do a lot of precautions, you have to make sure monitoring. All the things required to give blood is sometimes what you, you need to take precautions just like you have to take drug. But blood is so important that in some phases, it is considered like a transplant. Like somebody doesn't have a kidney, or all the kidneys failed and you are trying to give something to keep them alive until you get, uh, or somebody doesn't have a heart, uh, yeah, sometimes it is considered in that level. So your effort to do this, to provide this life-saving drug or organ, it's, it's just wonderful. So as the Minister of Health, we call on all partners, uh, including members of the Minister of Health, like the CEOs, the regional health directors, to support this initiative as this is reco uh, highly commendable. So when we get blood, it is usually screened. And we go through a lot of processes to ensure that the blood we give is safe. But the yield we've been getting from the army is very high. It means that if you give us 100 blood, a high percentage of the blood will end up being used for all the patients. And so we want you to continue to continue to keep healthy, to continue to stay safe so that you can save more people. Um, let's, let's, this is the general advice for the whole country, but more especially for the army because you, you are a reservoir of blood for this country and we want you to stay safe so that anytime you come to donate, uh, you can give us the blood and it will be usable. I think the army is a good partner, the armed forces that we need to work with to ensure that the blood we give is further compartmentalized into different components so that it can be more useful. One blood donation pint we get from one person can save a lot of people. So you can remove the platelets, you can remove the clotting factors, you can remove the plasma, and you can use it. So that one blood, if we develop our system to error, can save more people than just one like we are doing now. And we want to work with the army in that respect to ensure that in the future, We'll be able to compartmentalize the blood into, so that it will be more efficiently used. And uh, I think we have to work with you on that. Uh, we once again, thank you. We, we are representing the Minister of Health, and he has ensured that we are here very early 
to make sure that we don't miss this very important gathering. And we want to remind all of us that this is not only for the army. We see that the army is taking the lead, the armed forces is taking the lead, is doing, but everybody else has to come on board. Because the life you save may be your own. You know, just recently you have a group, you know, maybe involved in an accident and then you need to be given blood. You go, go to the nearest hospital. So let's all try to emulate the army and do as they are doing. It will be very difficult because they've set the bar very high, but we encourage everyone to take on board this good measure. And we want you to encourage other sister sources, sister forces, to also emulate what the army is doing and be ready to provide blood for the, for the populace anytime they are called upon. Thank you very much once again for your kind attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Bitte. Um, we are expecting statement by the uh, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Jakubo Drame. Are we good to go? Are we good to go? I can't hear you. Are we good to go? Let's get up and answer properly. Perhaps some of you are tired. Get up. Are we good to go? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Are we good to go? Yes, sir. You mean my son, nine years old, <laughs> shouts louder than all of you combined. Are we good to go? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Did you take breakfast this morning? Yes, oh, you mean you didn't take breakfast? <laughs> but in the military, it's not an excuse. You owe it to your nation. You owe it to the institution. Are we good to go? Yes, sir! One more. Proud of this profession we call the military. You should be proud to serve in the uniform. I have said this, and I want to repeat myself. It's the most noble profession you can be proud of to serve in. The Quran, the Bible, made specific reference to serve in uniform. Simply because that's the ultimate sacrifice you can give to your country. Under adverse conditions, under peaceful situations, you're always willing to come out to preserve the peace and tranquility of this country. So you should be proud to serve in uniform. So tell me that you're proud to serve in uniform. Are we good to go? Yes, sir. One more, please. Are we good to go? Yes, sir. That's better. That's better. You can take your seat. I want to begin by invoking the blessing of God as we are about to unroll what I call history in this country. Allow me, Honorable, to invoke the blessing of God before I make my statement. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, all praises belong to him alone. Lord of the universe, the gracious and the merciful, master of the day of judgment, thee alone do we worship, and thee alone do we ask for help. Guide us in the right path, my Lord, the part of those on whom you've bestowed your blessing upon, and not those who've gone astray. Amen. The honorable minister, of Defense of the Republic of the Gambia, Ambassador Sheikh Omar Fai, the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Edwards Francis Small Teaching Hospital, Dr. Sala, the Deputy Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces, General Mama Cham, the Director of Health Services, Edwards Francis Teaching Hospital, Dr. Mustafa Bitte, the Commander, Republican National Guard, Colonel Turi Jaune, the representative of the Commander, Gambia Navy, Navy Captain Fatu Jaite Balde, the Director of Chief, the Director of Chief Medical Officers of this revered, revered hospital, distinguished members 
of this wonderful hospital, and most importantly, before I forget, the permanent secretary, the Ministry of Defense, Madam De Marinjai, and you find men and women in uniform. I'm referring to you, officers, soldiers, and rating of this fine institution we call the military. You should be very proud to serve in uniform. Be proud of your profession. It is one of the most noble profession. And of course, when people are desperate, you always are there to give them hope and aspirations to move forward. On the adverse conditions, as I mentioned earlier on, you're always willing to come forward to confront whatever difficulty it is. Even in the eyes of God, going by both religion, Christianity, and Islam, equally reinforcing the acknowledge the important role you are playing to serve in uniform. And according to the hadith of the prophet, if I may just go straight into the translation, the English version, the prophet said, and I quote, if you serve your country in uniform, you serve with distinction, you serve with ultimate sacrifice, with complete dedication to duties, and if you should die in serving your country, heaven is assured. Unquote. So you and I, we should take pride to serve in uniform. And I want to commend and salute your efforts, individually and collectively, to serve in uniform. And having demonstrated the willingness, unreserved willingness, commitment to come forward willingly to donate blood today is quite extraordinary. And you deserve to be commended and appraised for such an excellent endeavor. <laughs> Distinguished members, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps if I may assert, the Gambia Armed Forces during the period on the review We've been the largest single blood donor to Edwards Francis Teaching Hospital. Each time this hospital is desperate in need, more so in the context of blood, the first port of call is the Gambia Armed Forces. And we've always obliged you with that extra sacrifice and support because that's what we want to give back. This time around, we are saying, every now and then you come to us asking for blood, especially when you're in desperate conditions, in their need. We've always obliged you. But this time around, we are saying, we want to bring it to your doorstep. And we want to come in a large number to contribute meaningfully in terms of the quantity and quality of blood we give. And trust me, we have quality blood. You know why? We do training, we don't sit and eat, <laughs> right? So whatever blood that runs through our veins is a very qualitative and quantitative blood. We are very proud to serve in uniform. We undertake trainings. It's a characteristic of we are, as members of this fine institution, we call the military. So be very proud, undertake exercises, so that we can continue giving quality and quantitative broad as and when required. Today, we are coming in large numbers. And it's done concurrently, concurrently in the context of, as we are doing it now, all major hospitals across the length and breadth of the country simultaneously are donating blood. Today, with IMAX specific main hospitals, Edwards Francis is one of them. We are saying Serekunda Hospital is another one. We are saying Brikama is another one. We are saying Buyam Hospital is another one. Mansa Konko, Farafenye, Base, Bansa, and the list will go on and on. Why we do that? Simply because we want to say thank you to you, the Gambians. You've bestowed your trust and confidence in us to serve in uniform. The best we can do 
as a way of gratitude, because we are very acknowledging the efforts of individuals, is to come out and say thank you. And that's Gambia at large. You have that confidence in us. We want to renew the confidence. We want to re-establish a way forward. We want to enhance the cooperation between the military and the larger civilian com community. One way we believe we can do that is to come and say, our blood is your blood. Our blood is your blood. Our blood is your blood, meaning we can do anything, everything, anywhere, with nothing to sacrifice and give you enough blood so that others can live. Others can be good citizens of this country, and others, of course, can have a new lease of life. Because some under desperate conditions, on the verge of dying because of what? Lack of blood. We are saying you can always count on the armed forces as and when you need them. We do understand with immense gratitude that you are limited in terms of the number of capacity of blood you can accept. But perhaps I want to share with you what is our strategic end state. We had planned as an institution to say at least we can give you 1,000 pints of blood. That's what we want to give you. We can even go beyond that if you have the space. Like I said, we have quality blood and we have quantity blood. We would give it to you. Once again, men and women of the armed forces, you've made us feel proud. You did not hesitate individually and collectively to respond positively to the clarion call to come forward and acknowledge the need and contribute to the need to give blood to those in desperate need. I cannot express in words how touched and really impressed I am as your commanding, as the chief of defense staff, to see this positive response with no external efforts. You volunteered individually, collectively, to come out and give blood. We would have loved to give you more than this. But aside this, we have other constitutional mandate to perform. So we try to strike a delicate balance as to what we can give you, equally trying to perform our constitutional mandate. It, is, would be, it would be remiss of me to conclude without acknowledging the special sacrifices and contributions by specific individuals who also contributed in no small ways in making this event a resounding success. One of them is one of our strategic partners, that's the Gambia Armed Forces strategic partner, that is AFRISA. When we, when we shared this new and noble initiative with them, this was precisely two days ago. They did not hesitate to say, we want to associate ourselves with this laudable initiative. On the basis of that, they did not hesitate to say, we would undertake the responsibility to provide you with the T-shirt to denote the event. We want to acknowledge and commend their efforts. <laughs> Equally, GAC Global Enterprises went out of the blue. They had this notable initiative on the side of the Gambia Armed Forces. They approached us and said they would want to associate themselves with this notable initiative. On the basis of that, they made meaningful contribution as well to complement the existing efforts of Rizal to make sure that we have enough of features to go around the length and breadth of this country. And of course, we want to acknowledge and commend the exceptional effort. <laughs> Finally, I want to acknowledge the exceptional effort of our chief medical officer and his team. You've made us feel proud. You've gone around consulting and I was even made not only limited to Edwards Francis Hospital, all the chief medical office, uh, chief executive officers across the length and breadth, he was in consultation with them to make sure that there's synergy, there's that coordination of effort to make sure that this event is a resounding success. Of course, you deserve my commendation and praises. And of course, the senior cadre of the armed forces and you, the other ranks. 
You've made us feel proud, and God bless all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Yakuba Drame. Thank you. Uh, may I welcome the uh, Minister of Defense, or the Minister of Defense, Honorable Sheikh Omar Fai, to go here. I thank you all for, for having me out here. That was a quick one. I was not expecting to stay this long, but it looks like it was predestined. That's my belief. And I think with the newfound democracy, everybody has right to their opinions. And people should be respecting people's opinions. So my opinion is this was not planned, as far as I'm concerned, properly for me to stay this long. But everything happens for a reason. And I've accepted it in good faith that I was supposed to be here. Allah wants me to be within this midst of armed forces and patriotic Gambians taking out their blood to give back to their country. Please allow me to acknowledge and recognize the president of Dr. Adam Asala, who is the, the board of directors, chairman board of directors of this great hospital. Of course, the, um, Dr. Bitei, Dr. Roberts, and all senior medical and armed forces, um, senior people that are present here. I just want to save time, so I would not want to go through any of these protocols. First of all, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this day possible. As a country, we thank him for keeping us safe and being where we are today, we are sitting here in peace. And that is big. We have to say thank God for everything. We have to, as our Christian brothers and sisters will say, to God be the glory. We have to thank Almighty Allah for all his favors. It's, it could have been worst. Several years ago, in retrospect, if you think about what has been happening, and you are here today speaking, and everybody is um, appreciating, and we're in peace, we have to say, thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Allah, for everything. And as your Minister of Defense, I bring you greetings from President Adam Abaro, who is President of the Republic of the Gambia and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, that I am here at this very very, very great institution. I think one of my uncles once told me about some of our elders that talked about the Edward Francis Teaching Hospital in the 30s. In 1937, when my grandfather represented the Gambia at the coronation of King George VI on the 12th of May, 1937, and when they came back with the other elders of Banjul, the Dr. Mahoney, who was the first speaker of the then National Assembly, Dr. Edward Francis Small, Dr. Mahoney, and lots of elders from Banjul, Alaji Usman Jeng, Alaji Usman Jai Gormak, Alaji Usman Jai Moji, uh, Dr. Mahoney, and lots of other elders, both Christians and Muslims in the Gambia, talked about the spoils of war. After the Second World War, some of the monies we had some of them talked that we should start putting that. That was then the only hospital in the Gambia. Today is not a day for me to give lectures on history, but I can assure you, I encourage anybody to start making your findings about the history of this great place. So it is not a coincidence that our grandchildren are sitting here, that our great-grandparents started to clear the fields to what we have today in the Gambia, and we have to appreciate that. I want to appreciate the armed forces on behalf of His Excellency, President Barrow. We just came from Kamfenda yesterday with a big delegation, extend condolences to the families, our late soldier, who is part of our family, Malik Manga of blessed memory, who passed in a vehicle accident when he was serving this great country. And we prayed for him. We asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his infinite masses unto him and all the, that passed. General Drame, I have to congratulate you. General Cham, the colonel senior officers of the armed forces, 
uh, we are all optimistic that you are moving on the right lines. I have to congratulate Dr. Conte and all his team as well. When we were in Yundum camp in 1984 and 1985, if anybody would have told me that the armed forces will one day have scores of doctors, of lawyers, of nurses, it was only one doctor in those days. One doctor, Dr. Malik Njai Pacha, who was a captain. Jai, you know what I'm talking about. You are an orderly room. I think you were a sergeant then. The general was there taking care of communications. It's always good to know the history of your institution. Like Sir Winston Churchill will say, the people that forget their history shall be sentenced to repeat the worst part of it. And we don't want to be part of that. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen in this noble armed forces, we are together with you. President Barrow, his cabinet, and the entire government, and the entire country will be supporting our sons and daughters. We are not going to abandon you because you are putting your lives in the front for this country. We have to say thank you to all of you. I cannot be happier standing here to thank the press and everybody who made um, this occasion a success, but the leadership of General Drame. He's not only a refined senior military officer, but he's also a diplomat par excellence. The guy served as a, a, the, the number two man in New York, and I found him there many years when I was in Washington. This is the kind of leadership we yearn for. The general charms, the jowness, the dramas, the sun. Name it, the people I've seen in the top, when we all come together, they can move these armed forces to where we want it to be. So I want to appeal to all of you to close ranks, to come together and support the leadership of the armed forces. The president told me the other time that whatever we don't do for them now is we don't, because we don't have it. Honestly, whatever we have, we'll support the armed forces. And I'm proud to be here to quote him, quoting his excellency and commander in chief that what he told me maybe barely 96 hours ago. When we had a briefing, he said, anything we don't do for them, but as a country, whatever support we should give to our armed forces and sister services, we should give to them. So please, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Do not be discouraged. You are young. Nobody will be the Gambia armed forces. Only Gambians who will serve in this noble profession. However powerful a country is around the world, they cannot be the Gambia armed forces. It must be the sons and daughters of Gambia who will be at a 50 degree in Garawal Kuta that I visited last week, and you had the sentry guy there, 50 degree, he was there to protect the integrity of this country. <laughs> and, and, and please make no mistake, that is not something small for all Gambians. Where you go to the borderline, you have your brothers and sisters in the open, under the hot sun, sometimes some of the Jufen, they eat, they don't eat well, they're still hungry. But their pride, national pride, patriotism, loyalty, they're there to say we are defending the territorial integrity and the flag of this country, the constitution of the country. But everything we do, we have to do the right way. The first principle of internal security, when we used to be in the military school decades ago, they said is every action must be justified and justifiable. That's what we were trained. I'm not sure whether the training has changed. Maybe generals will tell me. If it is the same principle, huh? exactly. Every action you take must be justified and justifiable. Minimum force. Know what force you want to get in. When we are talking about withdrawal, they said one of the principles of withdrawal is what? Maintaining an intact front. Is this still a principle? Maintaining a, 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 an intact front, one of the principles. Principles of defense, perimeter check. So we are in love with this profession. This is the Gambia Armed Forces. Finally, I want to congratulate you. When I went to the headquarters, I saw a quarter guard that was placed, General and his people. And my, I had chills all over my body because I said they're underrating these armed forces. Maybe we are not talking enough maybe because of history, but we want to change the tra trajectory. We want to come at a pedestal where the Gambians will know what armed forces they've got. It's not an eight to four armed forces. No, it's a professional armed force. 
that when you go to Rwanda, you go to Darfur, you go to Liberia, you go to Saudi Arabia, they respect the Gambia Armed Forces. I can tell you that right now. We have two colonels serving right now in Riyadh. Colonel, Colonel Balde, Samba Balde, from Dalaba in the Nyaminas, and Jallo, who used to be with you as a corporal at the Orgly Room. Now they are senior officers in Riyadh, and they are well respected. The generals call me, they say, these are one of the best staff we've got. It's because of they come from here. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to be proud of. Let us continue to respect the laws. Let us you know, just stay online and follow the standing operational procedures of the leadership. The terms and conditions of service are going to be clear. We are trying to reform the institution and all the, you know, the strategies and principles so that you people we live in peace, and when your sons and your daughters become the armed forces, they would have found out everything is intact. It cannot happen overnight. We're on it. We all need your support. Once again, this big hospital, you have, the general said, you have quality, quality blood. And blood has been given all over the country. The second battalion in Farafenye, the third battalion in Kanilai, the fourth battalion in, um, sorry, in, um, in Basse. The third battalion in Basse, the Navy, the Naval Command, all other institutions today is a very historic day. They are giving their own blood to the population of the Gambia. So once again, I can be here talking for hours, I can tell you right now, because it's my passion. And I want to conclude by congratulating Mr. Dabo. When I invoke the Quran and say the sentence, out of a couple hundred people, he's the one who came out to answer and I want to recognize him. There is a lady who said, well, I knew the answer. I told her that you are a little bit late because of Dabo. Maybe she didn't even know. Huh? Because you know, some of the women, you have to be careful. Surah to Nisai, verse 108. Yastak funa minan nasi, wala yastak funa minan lahi. It's in the, in the surah of the women, Nisai. Everybody can recite that. Dingamuna nah niti, waidomuna nah yala. So I asked the lady, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this sentence in that verse, the women? He said, are you trying to say that we deceive people? I said, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying maybe somebody will answer the question, why that sentence is in that chapter. You can fool the people, so, but you cannot fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's got the bigger satellite. So everybody do the right thing. No one is infallible. No one is an angel here. We are all human, but try to do the best and know that you have to keep dignity. I don't care what degrees you have. If you don't have character and you don't have loyalty, you don't have trust, I will have problem doing a lot with you. And I think a lot of good people in this country are watching people who have character, who you can trust, who are not going to disappoint you, and who will always be there to serve the right thing in this country. So once again, thank you so much. We wish you all a very successful tenor in the armed forces. We wish you all to come together and see what we can do to make sure we empower you in your peacekeeping operations, in your studies in various institutions, and in your own careers. My duty as a Minister of Defense is to see what can we do to move your lives to be better. And that's what General Drame, Cham, and his people. You have a new Republican Guard National Commander, Jaune. He's been on the ground for long. So we have a lot of experienced senior officers that when you give them together, they, you support them, Within a year or two, I'm telling you, inshallah, you will see continually the armed forces improve. So that when we retire very soon, in a few years, we can get sons and daughters of the Gambia whom we can trust to ensure to run the armed forces with no strings attached, no tribalism, no nepotism, no problem. People who have capacity and character, give them the job. Whether they are from Banjul or Fatoto, it don't matter. That's the kind of armed forces we're trying to put in place. So be happy. I know next time I may hear some more shouting because the general wasn't happy. When you all yelled for three or four times, he wanted to hear more power. But I can assure you what I had, I think that's good enough for me to tell you the truth. What I had from you people sacrificing your lives under the hot sun, limited logistics, lots of problems because we are trying to pick the pieces together. We had inherited some broken system. That's the truth. And there's no, Maslaha has a limit. If you Maslaha and you don't want to tell the truth, you're going to be doing the same thing, expecting a different result. We don't want that to happen to us. Let us accept our mistakes. Let us know where we went wrong. Stop pointing fingers at people. Let us come together 
and look for avenues of redress. I also want to acknowledge officials. They've always been very helpful. I think General said it. Please extend our regards to the leadership, Alaji Badara and your team. Um, I think this is what we want to do, to partner with you to continue to sensitize and educate Gambians about the armed forces so that they know that we are their brothers and sisters. We had mistakes in the past, but we're trying to grow. So finally, Dabo, the interpretation is Allah says, it's only Allah who knows his armed forces. Then nobody knew Allah had armed forces, but he said it. He said, Wama ya'lamu junuda rabbika illa huwa. Ken hamut armed forces si yalla yi? Muna yalla reka ko ham. Motah mane ko, a private soldier called Corona, yana nyo yalla balal kon mudem. He's a private soldier in the armed forces, so you don't want to see a sergeant or a lieutenant. If a private soldier can bring the world to its knees, then you don't want to see the soldiers in those armed forces. But the answer is, and that's one of my last word, is the armed forces soldiers of Allah are the winners. After he said that sentence, there is another sentence that compliments that. Wama ya'la mujunuda rabbika ila huwa mune man suma soldari ken hamuko. Man sarek maako ham. Wa inna jundana lahumul ghalibun. That's the next sentence. Ya Allah ne, my armed forces are going to be victorious. God bless. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hey, I'm being informed that among the senior staff that are going to donate blood right away, would be the, major, the CDS, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Yakuba Drame, and uh, Deputy. Deputy to him, right? Yeah, Brigadier General Mamad Cham. Mm -hmm. the, director of logistics. the Director of Logistics, Colonel Dembo Jaju. Colonel Dembo Jaju. Da director of uh, Training. Director of Training. Lieutenant Colonel C.D. Juf. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we want to acknowledge the presence of AFRICEL, partners of uh, the Gambia Armed Forces in this project, Gas Global, Gamtel Gamcel, and KMC all have representatives here. I am very sorry, apologizing for oversighting. Thank you very much for coming, and we thank you very much. Thank you.
Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel, Yaibarom. I got it. Okay, million, Albaga. Albaga, important. Yeah, not transfer. Yeah, transfer. Have code Okay. What's that? Until I sort of. Ah, that's Sorry. I got it. Million, Albaga. Albaga. But Allah service Ah, but kuno marakaria. Ah, jangno miwana forest de biro. Gambia tonko na lombaria biro. Ah. Very for Kato. for Fifty-six branches more of the Gambia. Ah, ha. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Bangol. Unka Kono Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Falindiro for Nadi left a member of Kodito Koton in Kodimaro. Janum number one in Yonda. And no for another another enterprise is Sotali. Wall of Wallam Nindipo, Domoro Fanangol Fanabe Fidal in the Daddy Man in Domoro in Fane Petiat. Gambia Dauda Yalom of Fakindol Sotali. Ha, what more ha? A parent of Yalom Kazan left a Yell and Kendo Levina. Yalabuka Nilakula, Yalandel Chosanol, Abarka. 